So I'm here to give you my first impressions on the Oculus Rift S. So first we had, well third actually, because this is actually the third Oculus, CV1. This is what most commercial gamers have been playing with for quite a while now. And it's a great headset. Um, is it perfect? No. But it had some good qualities in it. Now everybody's wondering, well, look, we've got the Rift S out now. Should we be moving to this? I'll give you my answer on that in a little bit. There's some things that I did like a lot better when it came to the original Rift. This headband. I like it. I actually don't mind having these headphones on it. While it's not superior sound quality, it, it, got, it got the job done enough to where I didn't have to wear another something else on my head for headphones. But again, it's not the greatest quality, but it got the job done. When you set this up with all the straps, it stayed where it's supposed to stay. And you could put it on, and you could always just put it right back on the same way it was. I never had to adjust any more straps. I could just slide it on and off the way it could. This, however, went with the new Halo design, like they have on the uh, Odyssey, the Lenovo, and those. So basically, you'd adjust it by this dial to fit your head, and you only have this one top strap. Now, of course, um, like Lenovo, and Lenovo did have some input on creating this um, headset, so keep that in mind. Uh, but you just use this dial, and you bring it out to where you want, and of course, you use it to tighten it on your head. My problem is with it is, of course, I've got a fat head <laughs> and I'd have it way out there. And if I wasn't careful about how I held this unit, now let me see if you can hear this. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it's actually closing. So it doesn't stay where it's adjusted to. So I found myself, I went to put this back on my head and it was too small. I'm like, uh, what the hell? So yeah, that this little gear mechanism for adjusting your head, your head strap is not very good. Is it a deal breaker? No, not really. But it's just an annoyance. The other thing I hated in here too, well, it's not that I hated, but I don't really like as much, is see those holes right there? Those are your speakers. Those are your headphones. That's where the sounds come out of. Can you hear them? Yes. Are they as good as you had with the headphones on these? No. Um, you have to turn it up a little bit louder to hear everything the way you should be hearing it. Um, and with the width of this headset, or this headband, You've got a very limited space. So if you use a low profile headset, so say like I, I'm a big fan of the Game Pros from uh, Sennheiser. Okay, that's a low profile headset. I can't wear it with this Oculus Rift. So you'd need something with a good quality headband on it that actually expands out. So something like this, or this quality, or you know, something that has a flared out headband on it, so it can go around this halo comfortably and not feel like added pressure on your face. So again, deal breaker. No, not a deal breaker, just another annoyance. Uh, here's a really huge annoyance I have. Here's the original CV1. And as you can see, how you have this in here. Yeah, let me get there. There you go. You see your 
pocket right there for where your nose went in. Of course, you got a fabric right here, so you don't actually feel all the plastic in there where your nose sits. And when I use this one, my nose would actually go all the way in to this headset to where the, my eyes would sit. So I'm basically covering my entire nose. Now, if, if you can see in this video, I don't have a small nose. I've got that big ridge on my head. Uh, on my head, on uh, my nose, sorry. <laughs> Here's the problem with this one, and I'll let you see. When I put this on, you can see where my nose may look like it's all the way in there, but the whole unit is actually resting on the bridge of my nose. Now you have this button right here to where, especially for people with glasses, you can move this in and out for proper adjustment, but it doesn't matter what it wants. It's still going to use the bridge of your nose, or at least for me it does. It uses the bridge of my nose to support the weight. And after, after this little, I mean, maybe 30 minutes in, I'm already feeling very uncomfortable in my nose because I'm just feeling the weight of that headset. Now, is it fixable? Because you can see it's very, there's no fabric there. It's just a thin piece of rubber that covers that whole, for lack of a better term, nose pocket. Um, can this be Mickey Mouse or fixed in some way with something like a, a thin weather stripping, you know, the foam weather stripping that you could stick in there? Yeah, probably. So it's a quick and easy fix. So it's not something that would totally ruin the experience because you could actually do something about that. And of course, this whole, the foam around here, it's very, very thin very flimsy not as high quality as the original rift cv1 so i mean but the headband the headband is good quality as far as padding that actually is comfortable i don't complain about that believe it or not supposedly you know this is supposed to be better ventilation and so forth i actually sweat a little bit more using the rift s now, whether if that's because it may be putting off more heat, because as you can see, it's got the cameras all in the headset. No more sensors. Now, that's a great thing. That I, that I absolutely love, the fact that I don't have to plug any external sensors in, especially if you're somebody who uses the controllers and you play other games that aren't like sim racing or flight sim, something where you actually are using your controllers to actually play a game, say like Beat Saber or Robo Recall. Um, that's really great because you have to have a minimum of two sensors for that. So you're taking up just two USB ports for just those sensors. So you get it. Yep. And I'll be honest with you, I actually found that I was actually losing, not losing um, tracking as much with the Rift S. So I personally think the, the tracking is just a slight bit better with the inside out tracking. So I actually like that. I, I like not having the sensors. Um, a lot easier to set up too. You no know, more having to, oh, find the sensor with your headset measure you know where the floor is how where you're going to be sitting you don't have to do any of that on the setups anymore the setup on this is just outline your play area and have at it so it's it's great um i like the no sensors inside out tracking on this pass through um because of the cameras and stuff in the headset you now have pass through and, and uh it's weird uh, it's not a clear picture. It's a very, very snowy black and white picture. You can make out what's there. You can see, but if you're if you're expecting to be able to just look through the cameras and see your keyboard and just start -da 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 -da, or whatever you got to do, don't expect that. You really actually got to look down and you got to know, you know, what's what. 
So um, you don't actually get any clarity on the pass through. Uh, as I said, the controllers, controllers are a little bit of a new redesign. They are uh, very comfortable. Each only take one AA battery. Uh, I haven't taken out the straps yet because I didn't play a lot. But what I did play, I was enjoying. And me having this headset, this is the 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 original uh, CV1 that came out without controllers. So all I had was the one sensor and the Xbox controller. I didn't have any touch controllers. So this is mo this was my first experience with touch controllers, and I I loved it. It was it was great to be able to reach in and grab things. Um, it was nice playing darts, air, shooting arrows. As you can see here, I'm a big bow junkie, so I love bow and arrow. Uh, so very easy to use. All sets up. It's they set themselves up. There's no hassle. So the Rift S is a hell of a lot easier to set up. Screen resolution. Now with the screen resolution on the Rift S, it is a 1280 by 1440 per eye, which means you get a total of 2560 by 1440 because it's all one panel in there. That's not, there isn't two screens in there for one for each lens. It's just one. And of course you have your lenses, which you look through and they're pretty good. Screen door effect, it is reduced a little, but it's not gone. So don't expect that. Uh, it, it's, it's still there can still be noticed in some games like race room racing experience um, some of the dashboard panels in, in a couple of the cars I kind of had a weird flickering on the graphics so I don't know whether that has to do with the the support because I know Nvidia just uh, is coming out with um, new uh, drivers for their uh, for that will help support this and a couple others um, So I don't know whether it was just something to do with the way in videos because I know that like a Nvidia Drivers and so forth aren't completely up to date yet with these uh, Now another big thing people are making a big deal over They reduced the refresh rate they dropped it from 90 to 80 Trust me, it's no big deal. It really isn't. The, there's actually not much of a, you can't really tell much of a difference at all from the 90 to the 80. And it's achievable to give you the same quality because they're using that one LCD screen in there instead of two separate OLED screens. Um, so yes, using LCD compared to OLED, you do have that slight drop in rich blacks so you're not your blacks aren't going to be as rich um but it, it's still good quality and then the other one people were worried about was the ipd because there's no manual adjustment if you look here on the original you have this little lever lever here this actually moved the lenses in and out so when depending on how you know your your eyes You'd be wide or narrow, you know, because not everybody's face is built the same. So if you had a had eyes that were closer together, you could adjust for that. Everybody's worried about, oh, well, this one has, does it by software. There's no actual manual adjustment. But, now I used this one on its max setting at 70. The Rift X with the software adjustment actually goes to 72. So I actually got it set up to 71 and I found that a lot nicer than the 70 I had on this. So I actually do like the software adjustable IPD. It works for me. Um, so I'm able to get this that little bit more comfort out of the out of looking through the lenses, which again screen door effect is not totally gone it is improved not a great huge leap though it is still there god rays are also greatly really reduced so 
Um, that's something you can look forward to in that if you were to get this. Whoop, dropping things here. So, what what do you what is it that people want out of VR? Do because now you have the quest. This is the question people are asking. Do we want more of these tethered units or is it beneficial for them to go with the standalone units like the quest? <sighs> Hopefully this doesn't get too bad of a rap because I know there's some people that aren't liking it or, and also giving it bad reviews. Luckily, we still have some um, better choices on the horizon, uh, whether it be the HP Reverb, uh, the Valve Index. Hopefully, there's still a big enough interest in the PC headsets to where we're going to be able to keep moving with innovation and the innovation isn't just going to stay in the standalone market for the casual gamer. And unfortunately, the casual gamer has such a huge grip on the gaming industry that it's something that everybody should be worried about. So if all you want to do is play casual games, Beat Saber, Robo Recall, whatever any of those games that were basically all you're doing is standing there and chopping then yeah i guess the, the quest is the way you want to go even though um remember top tier games not even beat saber runs perfect on the quest um if you want that high quality gaming when it comes to vr you still need to go pc and again if if the the sales and the, the 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 I don't know the the units moved when it comes to these PC headsets, if they don't make a profit for the company, it could easily easily slip away to the standalone market, and all of our improvements and innovations could go that way. And I'd hate to see that because being a sim racer. And also dabbling in some flight sims, I need to have the PC headset. I need the power. Other nice thing about um, this and the reason why they were also able to get down to the uh, 80 hertz when it came to the uh, refresh rate is the old headset, you would plug in one in a USB port and then the other in an HDMI port. The Rift S goes into a USB port 3.0 and a display port. So kind of can be trouble for a sim racer who likes to race in triples and also play around in VR or use both. Not many graphics cards come with more than three display ports. I don't actually don't know of any that come with more than three. Uh, so, I mean, there could be some, I don't know. So, keep that in mind. If you're going to go with the Rift S, but you also have triples running on DisplayPort, you're going to have to lose one of those DisplayPort plugs for the Rift S. Now, you probably could make up for that other monitor with the HDMI if there's an HDMI connection on that monitor. Who knows? But that's just something for you to think about depending on where you want to go when it comes to the headsets. And I do believe most of your newer headsets are going to start going with the DisplayPort instead of the HDMI. So that could be a concern for some people. Uh, again, a lot less USB ports being used is a nice thing. So if you were somebody who had the controllers and of course you had to have at least two sensors, you were using up three USB ports just for this older headset. Now you're down to one. So that's a good positive. So let me break it down for you. The USB, the, the, 
the, the <laughs> how do I want to say this? Um, the use of less USB ports being taken up is a positive. Uh, the slight screen improvements to slightly reduce that screen door effect is an improvement. It's a positive. Um, I ha for me personally, I have to say the software IPD is a positive for me because I was able to go to a larger IPD than on the older unit. So it does go up to 72 as to where the old one just went to 70. They are fixed lens, but they, again, because of the single screen, they're able to do the software and it works quite well. So for me, a positive, others may not. Uh, the controllers, very comfortable, easy to use, lightweight, register well, positive. Ease of setup, huge positive. A lot easier to set up than the old one, a lot quicker. And on top of that, you don't even really have to replace the software because it uses the same software, the same app. So basically all you're doing is reinstalling a new um, a new device into the app. And day one, I did have, a, a, have an update. So there, there was a sizable update um, to download into the app for the Rift S. So be aware of that too. Uh, so that's positive. Ease of setup, ease of installation. <sighs> Not so positive. I would have liked to have kept the original setup. If they could have just added the cameras, the single screen into this setup already, that would have been huge. That would have been awesome. Would have been wonderful. But, you know, working with Lenovo, you know, and all of them using this Halo types, it was bound to happen. But this not very secure, doesn't stay where it's set. That's not a positive to me. Not so positive. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Inside out tracking with the cameras not needing the sensors. Again, that's positive. Um, the speakers in the headband instead of actually clipping on and coming to your ears um, while capable not great so not a positive uh, the, the, the I don't know what you want to call this but the, the, the face foam basically the mask that you put on that covers your face um, thin, flimsy, almost like it's not there. Definitely need to get replacements for this. Um, hopefully that's not going to be too hard down the road to get those replacements. So again, what comes on here, not a positive. The weight of the unit being moved to the bridge of the, my nose may not be an issue for some. Some people may get more support out of the way they're able to wear it up here. Me, I'm actually getting a lot more pressure right there in the unit, right here on the bridge of my nose. And that is not a positive to me. It, uh, it makes it uncomfortable after, I mean, even like I said, 30 minutes makes it very uncomfortable. So we've got some great positives. We've got some, got a few negatives, you know, not so positive. So, do you upgrade from the original CV-1 to the new Rift S? I don't recommend it. If you're completely happy with your CV-1 and you have the controllers and you don't need controllers, and if you do need controllers, again, $100 on Amazon. Uh, I'd stick with it. They say... They say this one has a slightly larger field of view, just ever so slightly. It's not slightly enough to even notice it. Still looks like the same field of view. So again, 
is the screen door effect reduced enough to make this a horrible image? <sighs> no. Is things like texts and written words a little bit clearer in the Rift S? Yes. Um, but if you're somebody who already enjoys games like Elite Dangerous uh, and so forth, games like that, that where you can see and, and you're already having no issue, I don't, I don't see you needing to upgrade to that. And I tell you, I wouldn't because I t I much prefer this headband. <laughs> uh, so is the, the that improved resolution or the, the, the reduced screen door effect is not reduced large enough for me to justify spending another $400 on a new unit. And if you have it just to blow, just like, okay, boom, you pay it. But if you're somebody who needs to also offload your old one, it just it, for me, it just seems like too much hassle to go through just for that ever so slight improvement. Uh, now... Again, it's for people coming in new to uh, the PC VR and other types of VR, this is going to be your only option. This is replacing. Now, this is not the Rift 2. The Rift 2, they say, is in development. It's going into development or it's very early in the development. But this is just... Like they do with iPhones, okay? You've got your iPhone 8, then you have your iPhone S. That's pretty much what this one's doing, you know. That this is the this is the S version. This is the ever so slightly improved version. So they say. I mean, there's improvements on here that I wouldn't have improved on, but um, it's. I'm still contemplating whether I'm going to keep it. To be honest with you, um. <laughs> oh, as I was saying, uh, this is your only option because the original CV1 is discontinued. So this will be the only PC Oculus available. Um, whether it's currently only the only one available in some stores or online retailers still have the original Rift for sale, I don't know whether they've been... Uh, once those released, they called back the CV ones. I don't know, but it, it will eventually, if not already, be your only option when it comes to Oculus. Uh, I don't know much how much more I can tell you, other than the fact that I still got to have a little bit more time with it. Like I said, I'm still contemplating whether I'm going to keep it. I probably might. Um, I'm just going to find some way to work work with this this pressure this weight on the bridge of my nose see if I can put something in there to help with the padding um, definitely gonna keep my eye out for a new um, face mask covering because this definitely needs to be improved uh, other than that it's a good headset um, if the original rift wasn't out I'd say you know it's a great fit, great headset um, but if you're, like I said, if you're already still, if you're somebody who still has this one and you're happy with it, don't do the, the Rift S yet. Stick around if you really want to get into VR. You have some more expensive options, whether it comes to HP Reverb, the Valve Index, which are going to be insane money, as well as, you know, you got your Pimaxes out there. Uh... HTC Vive Pro. I don't recommend the regular Vive. Um, to me, the the screen door uh, effect in the original Vive is just horrendous. While it's has a little bit more clarity, the screen door is just horrendous to me in that one. Uh, so that's it. I don't know what else I could say. If there's anything else you want to know that I could possibly answer, uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below. And uh, once I can uh, get to it and I see it, I'll uh, I'll respond to it. And if I have, the, of course, the information, 
Um, if I don't, I'll see if I can find it. If not, I'll, I don't know, I'll just have to say sorry. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. If you're with the, if you already have the Rift, stick with it. If you're coming new, then yeah, I'd say go ahead and just uh, try and figure out this. Uh... Actually, you know what? If anybody else that does watch this and people want to see, uh, tell me what your experience is with this nose pocket. Are you getting that weight on the bridge of your nose also? Does it feel like the unit is more front heavy than it used to be? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, that's all I can say. That's my first my first impressions of the Oculus Rift S. Uh, hopefully, new drivers and so forth coming out uh, shortly for it. Uh, help make a little bit more improvements. Um, it can only get better, so we'll see. Take care, everybody, and if you're a sim racer, hopefully, I'll see you out on the track.